the delay. <clears throat> Man, I'm excited about uh, what's uh, about about our guest speaker today. Um, our guest speaker, you all, is uh, from the big state of California. Um, his son was uh, one of those elite juniors uh, coming up in the junior rankings. And uh, his son right now, you all, make sure y'all look out for his son. He's playing at San Jose State University. And uh, this gentleman, you all, has been mentoring me for the last couple of months and just tightening up my thinking and just kind of getting me in a space where, uh, you know, we need to get uh, John to the next level. So uh, without any further delay, I want to bring to you all uh, none other than Mr. Ken Styles. What's up, Ken? I think you're on mute right now, Ken. Press unmute. I got it. Okay. So How, you doing? How, you doing? How you doing, my brother? Man, I'm hanging in there. Well, good, man. Good. Good to have you on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so appreciative that you were uh, that you agreed to do this podcast. Man, we got some junior parents that need to hear the real of the real. You know, when I talk to you, I got to I got to get myself, get, get my head right and just know that the heat is getting ready to come. Man, my bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I know it's going to be all for the good, though. OK, so 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 the first thing I want to do, Ken, is I want to I want to ask you, man, give me your give me your background. Give me your story before we get into junior golf and get into all of that. Just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, man, I grew up in L.A. Uh, loving football and basketball, you know, Lakers, Niners, Dodgers, all that good stuff. So I've been a sports sports fanatic since birth. And uh, I had my first my first kid, my son, Chris. Right. You know. I wanted him to go in those directions. Football yeah. mainly was the, the sport we were going to choose. And then uh, I didn't know too much about golf, man. I still probably don't know too much about it. But he uh, he got into golf, man, you know, video games and stuff. And um, the rest is history, man. And just started putting it down. Started putting it down. So, so Chris, what made you – I mean, so, Ken, what made you want to pursue golf for Chris? Because, you, as you said, you wasn't a golfer. But what made you want to, to to get your son into golf? His uh his his first swing. <laughs> I was so wow. we often talk about um, you know, when was your best swing or what was your best this, best that? And he he would name some type of shot. I, mean, I hit a five iron out the bunker over the water, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I said, man, your best swing was your first swing, because I was all in. Right. If you had dribbled that ball or shanked it, I would have told you to sit down and Go get me a beer or something like this. <laughs> right. This ain't it. Golf right. too hard. <laughs> right, right. So, 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 give us the backstory on how you you really got him going, Chris, in 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 the game of golf. So, um, you know, after that first swing, man, the next day I bought him bought him a set, and we went to practice every day. Wow. And he was he was five years old. And I just had my daughter, I mean, she was one years old. I mean, we would, mm -hmm. I get off work and we, we go to work every day, every day, three, four hours a day. To the point where I came home one day, my wife was upset. Chris come home crying as he often did. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, she was like, yeah, I need to stop this golf stuff. But I was, uh, I was already invested, man. I would, I had dreams of the next Tiger Woods in my head at that point. Everybody, every time you go to the course, oh, you're gonna be the next Tiger Woods. Right. You're gonna be the next. I'm sure all y'all, y'all get that, man. That's, that oh thing man, drives me about? crazy. Yeah, what <laughs> it drives me about? crazy. But it, in the beginning, all I saw was dollar signs. Right, right. <laughs> hey, we gonna be rich. Exactly. But, uh, as I as I learned the hard way, man, golf is hard. Golf is hard. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, I, I got this saying, uh, Ken. That, that golf don't care who you are. Nope. <laughs> they don't. Golf don't care who you are, what you did yesterday, or what you did in the practice round, or what right. you could have. I, I would have shot if I didn't. If you didn't four putt four times, you would have been. No, see. <laughs> but you did four putt four times, so you can't. <laughs> right, right. And it tell you quickly who you are. And a lot of people have a hard time accepting yeah. who they really are. That's true. So, man, what was your experience like as a as a parent? You know, and, and we'll get into the top level golf that Chris actually played. But talk to us about your experience as a as a parent. Um, you know, being black in this game, man, you you experience golf 
a lot differently than a lot of other your competition does. And as a parent, you gotta you gotta recognize that and, and cater to that in some sense. You know, we were at a tournament once and Chris had played well and uh dude from Columbia comes in, we're eating in the in the snack bar and he comes in, and he goes, Man, you're a good player. Ooh. You're a really good player. And Chris was like, All right, thank you. Dude walked away and Chris was like, I ain't like that, Dad. I'm like, what you talking about? He complimented you. Nah, that's the way he said it. I said, son, what you heard was, you're a really good player for a black kid. <laughs> right. I, I didn't right. really expect that out of a black kid. Right. And so I had to explain to him, you know, this dude was straight from Columbia. I don't know how Americanized he was, but right. I'm like, man, probably only black CC is on Jerry Springer. That's so it. you gotta you gotta give that dude a pass. You gotta understand where they're coming from and just be prepared mentally for that. Cause uh we we face numerous racism incidents on the golf course that's true that's true and i know we could spend a gazillion hours on that but uh talk to us a little bit about um ken and you know from from a from a parent's perspective what what do you what do you feel that you get you you did as a parent because we got a lot of junior parents on and we've got a lot of junior what, what parents. I, what i feel i did or what a lot of junior golf parents especially african americans don't do is um, go hard. Gotcha. When I, when I mean, go hard. If you got to go four or five hours a day, every day, and you got to go to different golf courses, you got to go be seen in order to raise money to help you fund this golf journey. Wow. A lot of us, especially myself, you know, I was lower class when I, I quit my job so that I could, uh, pursue this golf thing so we living off one income man it was it was a struggle and I told my wife you shouldn't have to pay for anything golf related I got that and at the time I did not have that so I just I had belief in me that I I could I could raise the money right and yeah. uh that's what I did man um but the the, the main thing is the golf has got to be right before you go out asking people for money right the golf game has got to be right and and you got to put in major major hours man and you know, it, it's, it's literally blood, sweat, and tears, man. I can't tell you how many times, you know, Chris came home with a tear in his eye or I came home upset and, you know, blood pressure up high. And I'm just, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm mad at the world because <laughs> my son, Mr. Green, with a wedge in his hand, like I'm upset. Right. <laughs> hey, right. So if you don't have that type of passion for this game, um, Might you be know, wrong. Man, I had a, I, I, we on the range one day and this kid comes up to me with his dad and I, I watched them hit balls and Chris was probably 11 years old and this Chris was, this kid was probably like seven, eight years old and his dad come up to me and he's like, man, how you do it, man? This, this, I said, man, go play soccer. Wow. <laughs> he's like, he, right. Chris looked at me like, dad, you're so mean. You talk. I'm like, man, I just saved that dude a whole bunch of money, heartache, time. And time. <clears throat> yes. Go play soccer. You are not <laughs> built for this golf game. Right. Right. So if you ain't willing to, to get get in there and get your hands dirty with your kid and grind and, and, and do everything you need to do, man, my advice tonight is go play soccer. Play soccer. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, Save so, yourself some time, money, headache, high blood pressure, all right. that. It, you know, tears and arguments and everything. Right. Yes. So, it all so, comes along with it. But. My son, my son drove back to college today mm -hmm. and I had, and I had to work. So I met him halfway when I halfway. I met him on when he started his journey. So I'm going to stop at the gas station. Right. So I roll up to the gas station. I meet him and uh, he gave me a big hug, man. And he was like, dad, I love you. And, and thank you for everything you did. Wow. So the journey is worth it, man. When you get to the end and your goals have been reached mm -hmm. as a parent, as a dad, Man, there's no better satisfaction than, than your kid is like appreciative of the journey that you guys went on together. Yeah, uh, man, I tell you, that was that was that was real right there. Yeah, that was, that was real. Yeah, so I, yeah. I get those texts periodically, but at the same time, you know, yeah, I still got a smash on him. You know? right. <laughs> you still got yeah. a, you still got a crush him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's you know it's a fine line, especially. After they get to like 14, 15 years old, man, it's a fine line between crushing their spirit because mm -hmm. you also want them to be a man right. if you got boys out there. 
you want them to be a man, but at the same time, you know, they ain't ready for a lot of the decisions that they need to make, but you got to prepare them to start making those decisions on their own. Right. And that may even come down to when and where we golf at, where we practice at, because if your kid don't want it as much as you may want it for them, when they get by themselves in college or the next level, mm -hmm. if they don't have that work ethic or that love for this game, naturally it's, it's gone. It's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Gotcha. All right. So let me ask you this, um, Ken, as far as the, the mental uh, part of the game, um, how do you feel you help um, Chris with the mental part of the game? You know, because, you know, from what we hear, you know, you, you, got, you got the passion, you got the toughness. Um, what did you do? Some, some, sometimes that mental part, that, that, that toughness is a hindrance in golf. Gotcha. It's, it's when, I, especially when I first started, man, like I said, I come from football, basketball background and, yeah. You make a mistake or you do something, this you want to get, let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Get in their face. And right. That's, and that's that's the exact opposite. <laughs> right. You want to have your kid on the tee box thinking, let's go. I'm about to kill this drive. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Bogey, first hole. <laughs> so I had to learn the hard way, man. Um, I read some books and things like that, man. It's you gotta watch what you say to your kid and because golf is so mental. And if you send them out there in the wrong mindset, man, they, they do it from the start. It would be turning the times where Chris would be telling, used to tell me, I was thinking about the yelling I was going to get on the fourth hole. Wow. I was thinking, wow, how you going to yell at me in the car, the fourth hole? And I'm like, you thinking about that on the fourth hole? That's why you did it. See, you can't. Yeah. But it's hard to do when you, like I say, when you, when you go hard, there's just consequences to it. But at the same time, you don't reach those levels without right. that passion. That's right. Now, now, now uh, Ken, you just um, you just mentioned uh, a couple of books. You have a you have a couple of books you recommend that um, our junior parents read up on. Um, I'm not a real book guy, man. The one that I read was Bob Rotel, Mental Guy, some something like that. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, my personal experience, I, I don't. You know, everybody's situation is different. You can ask 100 people. 50 people going to love it, 50 people not. So, like, if you ask them, hey, man, you think I should go to this school? Well, my friend said they didn't like this because, they, you know, you like, but you hear somebody else that say they love this school and for whatever reason, this book, this, that. So, man, I tried to, uh, I tried to base my journey of my own experiences. Gotcha. And uh, whatever came of it, came of it. At the, at the, at the end of the day, uh, we raising our kids, especially our African-American young men, in the game of golf and watch how outstanding young men they become because of the game of golf. It teaches you so many life lessons. So regardless of what he shot or what he accomplished, man, it was, is for me at this stage, it was about the journey. I miss it. Right. So think, so, so take us back, uh, Ken to, uh, Chris, uh, junior career. What would be, what, what would you say is probably your, your fondest moment or, or two, you know, like what, what were you like really proud of? Um, fun, man, U.S. Kids Worlds. Gotcha. If I don't care if you, you got to break the bank, if you calling yourself serious about this game of golf, you have to go to U.S. Kids Worlds. There's nothing like it. That was fun. Gotcha. I miss, I look back on those days and, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, but at the yeah. same time, it was, it was fun, man. I got plaques on my wall when they give you that certificate of achievement that you made it. Yeah. To the tournament, man. They hanging up on my wall right now. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. Uh, biggest accomplishment, man. Um, when he won, when he won U.S. Kids State at eight years old, mm. man, I cried like a baby <laughs> and, <laughs> because we have been trying so hard to win something. Yeah. We yeah. want to win something. Yeah. So he won the state, man. And uh, I knew the publicity that I could get from that. Right. From winning from winning the US Kids State, I'm giving you guys a game right now. Y'all might want to take some notes on this one. Okay. My whole thing to raise money, this is the parent side, not the, the golf side, just the parent side. Gotcha. Um, I should tell Chris, dude, I need to get a picture of you with a trophy. I don't care what trophy it is, I don't care what tournament it's at. I need a picture with you with a trophy. Mm -hmm. From that, I can from the US Kids State win, I call my local newspaper. Mm. And I said, hey, 
this is the U.S. kids, California State. It was probably, he was eight years old. It was probably 12 participants in the tournament. Gotcha. In his age group. Yeah. But I call a newspaper and I said, my son won California State Championship. They're like, what? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's big. Like, right. That's big. That's huge. <laughs> they don't know. Right. All right. right. And I didn't tell those stories. That was a U.S. kid. But I, I just said the California State Championship. Yeah. From that. They did a full blowout story on my son, first page color, my local newspaper. Wow. From that, one of the local golf courses read the story. And in the story, I talked about how expensive golf was and how I need help and how we in this local community and y'all got the California state champion in your local community and you guys aren't supporting. Wow. From that. Strategy. I got, exactly, chess. I got a, I got a phone call from one of the local golf clubs out here and the owner wants to meet us. Wow. So I go meet the owner. He like, at this time I said, I'm not working. He said, how, he said, Kenji, how much money you got in your pocket? I said, man, I got like $20. He said, how's $20 a month, full membership, access to everything. I said, man, that sounds great. <laughs> so that's, that's, you got to get a picture with the trophy and then you got to, you got to toot your kid's horn. But the first thing you got to do is get a picture with the trophy. You got to win. Right. You got to win. You gotta second win. place, third place, whatever they're giving trophies out at. If he came in third in the California state, that's still. Still big. <laughs> yeah. Still so big. get a picture with the trophy and then <clears throat> get your local newspaper up, tell your story and see where it go from there. Gotcha. So Ken, let's talk about the, the tough times on the course. Like, you know, let's say our, our juniors are playing bad, you know, they're in their head. We as parents, you know, we're trying to keep them calm. We're trying to keep them cool. I can remember one time John was playing really good in a tournament and he got down to the last couple of holes and he just kind of fell apart. And he was like emotional and that kind of made me emotional a little bit. But talk about how to uh, handle the kids when they're having a tough day, when it's not going so well, because, you know, golf is hard, golf is mean. W- walk us through that process. Um, man, I'm not probably not the best person to talk to about, (laughs) (laughs) but what I've, what I've learned is Mm -hmm. if you need someone, if you're seeking that advice, if you need somebody to tell you what to do in those situations, the best advice is to not go out there. (laughs) Don't go. (laughs) Gotcha. Not go out there. So that's what I learned grow up later on is to let them handle it. And then what you'll find is when you get in the car to go home, he's had a bad day. You guys are in the car to go home and you didn't see it. None of it. Right. Um, Don't say a word. Gotcha. Drive home. You may take him one or two days, but then he'll start telling you about the round and in him telling you about the round, he'll realize his own mistakes faster. Gotcha. As opposed to you, man, you did this wrong. You did in his head. He don't know that yet. Right. But if you let him come to a realization and you just sit back and don't say, no, he know you're disappointed. He disappointed. But if you let him decompress, you know, it may take a day or two. But he'll start that, you know, on the third hole. On the third hole. Man, I knew I, sh- I shouldn't have took this club and I hit this shot and I did this and I shouldn't have did that and I did. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that, that was dumb. No, that was pretty dumb. <laughs> but <laughs> if, you, if you don't oh. let him decompress and learn, he never will. He'll always be waiting for you to to teach him what he did wrong and he just won't get it. Right. So my advice to that is to let them do it. If, if you, if you're the type of parent that gets emotionally involved, like I used to. Yeah. Cause you know, a lot of times when they finish their round, you know, you want to get in the car, you want to ask them how, you know, wh- right. why, why did you do this? Why? So you're saying just give them a little bit of time and they'll, they'll, they'll start yeah. talking about it on their own. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah. so now, you know, Chris is in college now, uh, Ken, um, how much are you involved now? Do you get a chance to go to the tournaments? You know, what's, what's, your, what's your parent role now that he's in college, he's driving? You know, what's your role? Um, ATM, bank. <laughs> that's, that's my role. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm the, the problem solver. Gotcha. You know, he calls me, dad, this, this problem. This one, I'm like, dang, can you just call sometimes and just, I just want to <laughs> say what's up? Hey. Just check on me every now and then. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> As far as the golf go, man, I have no input. Right. None whatsoever. And when you get to college, you quickly learn that that's how 
most coaches would have have it. Gotcha. Uh, the only information you're going to get about your kid's performance is what your kid tell you. And, you know, hopefully, you know, you built that relationship to where he calls you, he wants to call you, like, before he even gets to the, the scorer's table. Most of the time, it's to explain to me why he plays so bad. Right. He just, he want to check my temperature to make sure I'm all right. So it took years yeah. for me to finally get into his head that, Dude, I don't care what you shoot. I'm proud. Like, right. you know, especially reaching the goals that we reached. That was one of our goals to play D1 golf. I'm like, dude, you, as far as I'm concerned, you did it. Right. Whatever else you want to do after that, that's on you. And it's, I'll help you out in that. But I'm telling you right now, I should tell them every U.S. Kids Worlds. I'm, when he was five years old. Mm -hmm. I said, we, we started at five. He's five years old. And um, he's shooting. His first tournament he shot was 48. Mm-hmm. The second one, he shot 47 and like 46 or something like that. We played three tournaments in Vegas. I drove to Vegas three-hour trip and drove back same day just to play nine holes of golf at five and a half years old. I, like I was in it. Right. So we get back. This was December. And I tell him next year, we got to shoot even par. And he couldn't, at five and a half, six at this time, he couldn't fathom it. He was like, even par? <laughs> what are you talking about even par? Like, <laughs> I said, I said, look, <laughs> and I tell him you got to do it in practice. Right. You got to do it in practice. If you don't do it in practice, I'm dang, I'm not gonna take you to no tournament. Mm. So, so he would. He finally he he did it in practice. He, I had to convince him that he could do it. He did it in practice, and I said you got to do it in a tournament. And then his, his next tournament he played, he shot one under, thirty five, wow. nine hundred. Wow! But it he Dude. couldn't at that, especially at that age. You know they mm. don't understand how it works and man he probably still don't understand how it works at 19 years old so it's it, it's a battle the whole way through that's good that's good so ken before we open up the lines uh for for some of the parents and juniors um you know if you had to put you know a summary on developing a a winning junior golfer what would you say the the overall key element is to raising that elite junior golfer? If, if you're trying to get to elite status, right? not just a good, you're talking about elite, you need consistent everyday practice at a B or above golf facility gotcha. with practice facilities, gotcha. with above average range balls, and a consistent game plan of measured practice along with an equipment sponsor mm. and a way to get fitted and your clubs change maybe every six months. Okay. If you want to get to the elite status, I was fortunate to have all that stuff. Right. And I got all that stuff, uh, some luck and some just being in the right place by me going I live where I live is 90 miles or 85 miles north of Los Angeles. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a desert community and we don't have a lot of access to things. So I have to drive automatic. Everything is far from me. So when parents tell me they complain about something being far, then my response to them is you're not ready for this. Go play soccer. Right. If, if you, if you always going to practice at your local club, that's a C club because it's comfortable and you know, the guys at the club and, and everybody, no, man, sometimes you got to go to a course that, uh, you know, may have some money in it, may have some some people you can meet. And they're going to come up to you and they're going to see your kids swing. They're going to come up to you and ask you all kinds of questions. You can, you got to have a story. You got to have a story to tell. I mean, I went so far to tell you a little story. I went so far as to, I would finesse a lot of these country clubs local out here, Bel Air Country Club, Riviera, Valencia all these local expensive LA country clubs, you know, I would say, Hey man, my name is uh, Kenji styles. And my son is Chris styles. And he's a, he's a top junior golfer in our area. And we're, we're moving. And uh, we want to try your club. Are we trying to pick a club for him? Is there a way you can comp us around at your club? Yes. 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 <laughs> and then you get in there at this country club and you impress the hell out of whoever it is. You need to, I want to play with a member, a few members if possible to really get the feel of it. Wow, you drop hey, you dropping nuggets now. Uh, <laughs> you dropping nuggets now, bro. 
Man, that so is... I met a lot of I met a lot of uh, well-to-do people at these country clubs that was impressed by my kid that's still helping out to this day. Right, that's good. That's good, man. I I know, I know we got you know some of the parents on here appreciate the nuggets you just dropped, man, and 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 it's gonna it's gonna really help us uh, tremendously as we go through this journey that you already been through. I, that, you know, one of the things that we talked about earlier before we got on the podcast is you said. I know what y'all going through. <laughs> you, you know what we're experiencing right now. I mean, I, I feel y'all pain, man. I know what it's like. Just, yeah. I, I respect it's, all of y'all that's trying this, trying this journey, man. It's not easy. It's funny. You, it's funny you talked about the country club, Ken, because we were at a country club five minutes away, but it was okay. Uh-huh. And now we're at a country club 20, 25 minutes away but it's the best course in Columbia, you know, in, right. you know, in Columbia. So, you know, you, you, you're dead on it. It's got a, it's a matter of fact, the university of South Carolina used to practice there at the course we at now before they built like a multi-million dollar practice area on campus. So, so yeah, so you, 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 you're dead on that man about the facilities and the balls and, you know, yeah. being where, where money is. So now, uh, that's that's trying to reach elite status. Now, that, one of my main things when I when I speak with a junior golf parent is, man, you got to define your goals in this game, right? And your realistic goals, right? And so, mm-hmm. if if you know, my son played, we we had the a chance to play with uh, USC, uh, then USC head go- golf coach, men's golf coach, his mm-hmm. son Joey Zambri. Uh, we met him when he was they were eleven. Chris and and and, uh, and Joey were eleven. And at the time when we're, we're playing in this tournament, he's group, he's paired with us. I don't know who he is. I know, I don't know who the USC son or who a USC coach was. So in the course of the round, Chris comes to me and tells me that that's USC head coach son. And that's his dad, the head coach of USC. Right. It's like third, fourth hole. So now I'm like, Oh, it's on. I'm about to, I'm about to get out in this dude here. So, right. you know, basically, man, what I took from that kind of, I asked him, I said, how do you find your kids? Like I said, my son is 11 years old at this time. How do you find your kids? Do mm-hmm. they reach out to you or do you look for them? Like, how does it work? And he looked at me dead in my face. He said, if they got to find us, we don't want them. Wow. So if you send in your resume or your bio to these, you know, top 25 ranked D1 schools and they don't know about you, they don't want to know about you. Right. Trust me. They want no They're looking box. at these AJGAs and this US kids junior AMs, and yeah. you just wasting your time thinking you're gonna get a D1. If your kid was that, he'd be shooting that and he'd be on their radar. Exactly. Yeah. 